one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> Today we're looking at how to make four different bears and a monster. Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thank you so much for joining me today. My voice is still a little bit funny, but I wanna get on to some more gifts that we can make. I have a load of scrap sweaters and a load of scrap fleece. So with those two piles of scrap, I'm gonna be putting together a few stuffed bears, starting with one I've never made before. I think it'll be really a cute one and I'll do three different variations of that one making it sort of the classic charity bear that it was meant to be, super sweet. And then I'll turn it also into a polar bear and into a little monster, which is so cute. And all of your sweater scraps can go into making little monsters. They're just adorable. Then I'll show you my favorite little beginner's bear. And it's just a two dimensional bear, super easy for beginners. And my students have fun making that one. And then my favorite bear of all time, it's a three dimensional bear and he's just so sweet, such a classic little bear. There's only three pieces that go together to make him and my more advanced students have fun making him. So for all of these stuffed toys, there are free patterns available to you. Some of them I've used for years and they've been my favorites and some are new ones that I found. And so I'm gonna leave all the links in the description box. You'll be able to download those for free and print them out. The first bear I wanna make is called the Charity Bear, and this is from shinyhappyworld.com. I love what they did here. They worked on this pattern and made it sort of foolproof, nice and simple shape. They made it big enough to be a big squishy, almost pillow size bear, and they made some variations so that you can do lots of them, and the idea is that you make lots and donate them. So that's just a beautiful idea. I love that so much. Now, what I did though, I don't really want it to be big. I wanted it to be, uh, a smaller size so that I can use my scraps and use less stuffing. So when you print off the pattern, it comes out like it takes two computer sheets to print off the whole pattern. So I printed it, but then I reprinted it at 64.7%. I know that sounds crazy. It's just one of the default settings on the photocopier. So it just shrunk it down. I pieced it together uh, and shrunk it down. And then at that setting, like almost 65%, it fits neatly onto one computer paper. So for me in the classroom, that is much handier. And I think that's a really good size. So this is the same pattern I'm gonna use for the charity bear, the polar bear, and the monster. I'm just gonna show you some quick variations that you can do that make it super fun. So if that all sounds good to you, let's get busy. So for Warren the charity bear, I just pinned my pattern piece to a folded piece of sweatshirt fleece and cut around it just exactly as is. There's no adjustments to this except for the size. Then to mark the eyes and the heart placement, I stuck pins through the dots on the pattern piece and then folded my paper back and made a dot with my scrap of soap where those dots are on the pattern. Folded the paper back and made my pin mark. There's also a pattern for the belly, the muzzle, noses, the heart. And I just realized I forgot to shrink these down to 64%. So I think I'm gonna try them just as big as they are. So it'll be a full size muzzle and belly and heart on the shrunken bear. We'll see how that works. If it looks too big, I can always cut it down. So for these little pieces, you could use scrap felt or any little scrap sweater fabric. Really anything scrappy is gonna be just fine for those. And of course you could just make your own shapes for the heart and the nose and the muzzle. You can just do what you wanna do. I think I'll go for the heart patch, the wide muzzle, and the tiny nose. I think that's cute. So I found some sweater scrap for the wide muzzle and I could fit one pin on there. For the tiny nose, I found a scrap of faux leather, but it's so small I just taped it down and could cut around that. And then the paper is just gonna come off because the tape is all cut away. So that's kind of a good little way. So I like that. And this is again, just a piece of sweater scrap that might look familiar to you. So with these sweater pieces, I'm gonna be using a zigzag stitch to stitch those onto the body of the bear before it gets joined together. Oh, that's sweet. For the muzzle, I'm gonna to need to zigzag the nose on first before I zigzag the muzzle onto the face. I'm gonna try a little glue stick. I bought this a while, it's a fabric glue pen. This might be the perfect time to use it. It's just a little stick of glue. I'm gonna try it here, because these little pieces are way too small to pin. There's my tiny little nose. And you know what, thank goodness I'm using the 100% size. Can you imagine if I reduced that to 64%? That would be crazy. So 
This is so small. My goodness, it's really hard to see. I do not recommend sewing a little tiny black thing onto a bigger black and gray thing because I can't even see my edge at all. I'm totally guessing when to pivot. No, I don't think I'm in love with that. This just, I don't like it at all, no. Take two. <laughs> this is now the medium nose onto the wide muzzle. Hopefully that's gonna be cuter. So I'm using a zigzag that's 2.5 millimeters wide and 2.5 millimeters long. And this one has a little point. So I'll start at that point. And it's so much easier to see my edge now. So I'll be able to pivot around that a lot more easily. And I'm going really slowly and making lots of small pivots. Okay, that was much easier. Oh, and it's so much cuter, isn't it? Oh, that's way cuter. Afterwards, I'll be embroidering a little smile or something in there. That'll be cute. Oh, that is just so much cuter than my first try. Oh, yes, beautiful. So now I'll zigzag on the muzzle and the heart. I think that this little glue pen is working out great for this kind of project. Perfect. I'm leaving the same dark bobbin in, but changing my top thread to be a better match. Perfect, that's so nice. And then for the little heart, just like the nose, I'm starting at the point. I think that makes it neater. Start at the point and make your way around. Adorable, I love him so much so cute he already has a personality for the eyes i just cut out little circles so about a centimeter less than half an inch wide and then i've been playing around with a way to sew them down you could definitely sew these on by hand you could even just embroider eyes you can use button eyes or safety eyes but i think the safest thing for babies is actually just to sew on fabric if it's for an older child uh, like for the next one, I think I'll use safety eyes. So with a zigzag that is five millimeters wide and only 0.6 millimeters long, I've been playing around trying to land right in the middle of the circle and do a little zigzag back and forth. It's such a small little circle that I didn't really feel the need to sew around the circle first. I just wanted to anchor it with that little pupil in the middle and I could go up and down sideways with that zigzag, but I think that's pretty good. What do you think? Oh, it's pretty sweet. He's such an adorable bear. Now, I might try that same zigzag stitch to make an outline like that, and I'll just practice that on a scrap first. That'll do. The happy medium here is three millimeters wide and 0.9 millimeters long. Little straight line, and then how about just a little off-center smile. That's kind of more what's on the website and I think that is cuter. Here goes my three millimeter wide and 0.9 millimeter long stitch. So I'll go one way and then come back past the middle and go the other way and then back to the middle. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's adorable. Alrighty, so and now it goes together, right side together with the back piece and we're gonna pin around and sew. And anytime you're doing a stuffy, you wanna leave a gap at one of the straight sections. I'll put double pins at both sides of that gap just to remind myself that that's what I'm doing. And then it's a very small seam allowance. It says a quarter inch on the website, but because I've reduced him down to 64%, I think I better use even less than a quarter inch. And for this, I'm just gonna use a straight stitch. Starting at one set of double pins and the toe of my presser foot will hang over the edge. And then I've gotta make nice smooth little curves and follow that edge really nice and closely if I wanna get an accurate shape. So lots of little pivots and my foot is just going zoom, 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 little small bursts. A sharp pivot at his ears just to really delineate those. And then stop at my second set of double pins. And then before I can turn him out, I need to just do a little bit of snipping just into all of those inside curves. I think that with this small, small seam allowance, the outside curves are gonna be fine. I don't think I have to snip those. Inside curves though are just not going to sit well if we don't clip them. And as you're going around, check for any holes. Like if you've missed an edge and if you've got a little hole, fix it now before you turn it. I'm gonna use the dull end of a chopstick to poke out the ears and arms. I don't wanna to get too pointy. So I'm just in love with this little guy. I think he's so sweet. I love his little face. And so now I've just got some stuffing and I'll just pop that in. 
when you're stuffing a little thing like this, go right into the extremities first. So right into his ears and arms and legs, and then fill up his belly. And just tear off small pieces of stuffing at a time. It's tempting to just take a giant handful and try to do it all at once, but he ends up just being too lumpy like that. And make sure he's filled up right to your opening. Sometimes I know some people just kind of leave a gap right at the opening, but that's gonna look like a dent later. So fill them up right to the gap. And then we just want a needle and thread to close them up. About an arm's length of thread will do. I think it's good to use a double thread for this. And you need a big knot. So through once, you put the tail of the thread through the loop once and a second time. And then push all of that down and then cut off your thread that comes after the knot. You just want to keep it nice and neat. All right, so I'm bringing my needle in so I can hide the knot inside. And if I bring my thread out where that last stitch was, and then I just need to take a little small stitch in the edge there and a little small stitch in the edge here. So I'm just going back and forth, and this is the ladder stitch. I'm going by directly across to make the rungs of the ladder and then take a step down. Can you see there are now three rungs on the ladder? So I'm going straight across to make that rung and then taking a step down. Then when I pull my thread tight, the stitches disappear and that's the ladder stitch. So we just continue with that. Then I'm gonna tie a knot by just making one last little tiny stitch right where my thread's coming out. And see that loop, put your needle back through the loop, tighten that up, do that a second time, needle through the loop, tighten it up. And then put your needle in, come out anywhere so that your tail of thread is hidden inside him too. And then where you did that ladder stitch is nice and invisible. So there's Warren, he's all done and he's totally baby friendly. He's very safe. There's no buttons to come off if a baby chews on him. He's just completely safe and lovely. I love him. So now to turn this more into a polar bear. So I'm gonna be using a white fleece, so that's gonna help. But I think what I want to do is make the whole top of the head more round. Just round that right off. And then I want the ear to be more to the side. About the same size, but a little bit more sideways. So I don't need to duplicate that on both sides. All I need to do is fold my paper in half and cut it out. Maybe a happy medium is better. About like that. And then I can just clean up that line as I cut it out. Okay. I think that can look more like a polar bear. And if I put the eyes a little lower and closer together, I think that's going to be cute. So I've got my white, or it's actually a creamy colored sweatshirt fleece. And I think I will use the fuzzy side as the outside. It doesn't always last that well and it can go pilly and not look great. But at this moment, it just looks so beautiful. I gave into the temptation of using it for the right side. Same thing with marking the eyes now. Stick a pin through and fold the paper back. And then with my erasable pen, I can put a dot at each pin. I'll mark the middle of the nose, I guess. And so I just need to get the nose on there. And I really did like using this uh, little tiny piece of scrap fake leather. That worked out great. So if I go over my nose with a Sharpie, then I can trace it onto paper. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Like if it's a little asymmetrical, that just gives more character. Tape that onto my leather and cut. So glue stick that right on. Alrighty, so I'm gonna do the same little zigzag. What was it, two millimeters by two millimeters? Safety eyes. I guess I might as well use my same zigzag stitch to make this little mark like that. It might be smart to start kind of down here, up, go around the nose, come back down and go that way. My zigzag looks so much more open on this than it did on the other fabric. Yeah, I might just tighten it up. I'll shorten it up. Maybe it was 0.9. Oh, I think it was, wasn't it? It was 0.9. I'll keep it to two millimeters going around the nose, but then when I get back down onto the little smile, I'll change it to 0.9 millimeters. So our little beautiful polar bear who has just the sweetest face, he needs some eyes. And I bought this amazing kit off Amazon and it's got so many different choices. I think I'm gonna go with the blue. So this kit also comes with an awl to 
poke a hole where you want that safety eye to go and then you poke the eye through so the back is going to go on cup side down and then it cannot pull off that is really secure oh that looks so sweet okay so now he's ready to get sewn right side together all the way around just like i did with warren i'm gonna go all the way around following the curves nice and smooth and then nice clean pivots on all the corners and lots of little pivots on tight outside curves too. Lots of little pivots. Okay, looks good on the one side and the other. Oh, no, see, that's what I mean about if you miss an edge, you'll have a hole. So just check for that before you turn right side out. And even here too, I'm just too close to the edge. It's not a hole yet. Oh, yes it is. Okay, so I'll fix those two spots just by sewing in a little closer. Okay, all of these inside corners should be clipped. Don't cut your stitching, but you come pretty close. The test is kind of like this. If it can sit nicely inside out, like around like that, then I'm fine. So I think that's all good. And so I'll turn him right side out. Oh, look at his little face. Oh my gosh, he's so adorable. But look at that, even before we stuff him, just by changing the ears, making him a little more curvy, a little bit different face, it goes from being a black bear to a polar bear. So same idea, stuffing and then ladder stitch, you get it. I can use the dull end of a chopstick to push the stuffing around and then finish him with a ladder stitch. And he kind of looks like he would be chilly. And so maybe I might make him a little scarf. Now he's ready for life in the Arctic. Cute. Oh, they're good friends. Oh, that's so sweet. So now I want to show you one more variation that you can make to the same pattern. So let's just take a look at making this same pattern into a monster. So now to make our bear pattern into this kind of crazy monster, I'm going to tape on extra paper because the legs and the antenna stick up quite a bit. Okay, and then I'll fold it in half. So again, I don't have to worry about making sure I'm symmetrical. In fact, I don't have to worry about it being symmetrical anyway, because it's just a crazy monster. So the antenna, I want it to be about three inches by an inch and a half. So this ear is probably a good starter kind of like that good and i'm not going to use this arm i'll just take that right off and then the legs i'm going to make into that curvy funny shape coming in like that and then clean them up while i'm cutting that works well let's see what that looks like cute so now the little arms i need paper for they would be about an inch by about two inches here's an inch by two inches so somewhere in that range and they're going to bulb out at the end. Something like that. About like that. That's pretty cute. This is kind of a fun idea. Doubling up the buttons for the eyes is cute. A big shank nose. This one has the embroidered mouth. So this one would be for an older child because I don't, I don't like to give anything with buttons sewn on like that to a baby that's going to be biting everything. So all of this face detail, it can get done after it's turned and stuffed. This can all be sewn from the outside. Now this one does kind of come in at the waist. He's got a bit of a more svelte waistline. Maybe we'll do that. Put him on a diet here. So there are six legs. They are two pieces of each. So this is cut 12. This just fits nice on the sleeve. And then I'll just cut along the seam of the sleeve just so I can lay the pieces flat. I'm going to put my pieces right side together so the antenna are landing in that ribbing section. So with this white fleece, now I want to cut that little arm six times on the doubled up fabric. So that's a lot. If I can cut through four layers, that would speed me up. Oh, no problem. Okay, and then my first sewing step for these is to make all these little legs. So with that small, small seam allowance, I'm gonna sew around all the long edges and just keep this little short edge open. So for sewing these six little legs together, I'm gonna do a couple things. First, I wanna sew with a really small, small seam allowance. So I'll let this toe of the presser foot hang out over the edge. And then I just wanna hold onto my threads for the first few stitches, cause it's gonna need some help. So I'm just tugging those threads, then back tack, and then tug the threads again. So 
So that just helps it so that it doesn't get all tangled underneath and kind of sucked down into the machine. Now, here we go, around the curve, little small pivots. Okay, and then recently I tested out some sort of viral TikTok techniques, and one of them was for turning the point of a collar. I'm sliding that orange thread in between the layers, and then I want to sew over it. And on the collar piece, I just sewed one stitch over it because I wanted to just turn a pointy point. But this one I want to turn like rounded. So I want to just snuggle that thread in between the layers right up against the needle and see if I can stitch maybe about four or five stitches over it. And then lift up again, bring that end of the thread back around. So it's still in between the layers. I don't want to lose my thread. Good, I've got both ends coming out now. And then I can just finish sewing. If I now take my orange thread and pull it, I'm hoping that makes it a lot easier to turn these little arms right side out. Here it comes. There. Oh, that's easier. That is great. So doing that six times, I think is way easier than just trying to turn it right side out. Like that's impossible. I, like this is no fun at all trying to turn it out like that. The thread way looks so much better and was so much easier. I think I decided maybe we'll make two blue ones instead of all white. I'll get that thread in. I'm gonna go maybe four stitches. I know I'm having trouble counting. That's probably six stitches. And then bring that orange thread around between the layers again so that both of the threads, like the folded thread is inside there, yeah? And if I kind of tuck it in at the end, it kind of helps to get it started. Also, make sure you don't just pull one end of the thread because then your thread comes right out. There. Awesome. Then the thread slips out. Okay, yeah, these ones without the thread, I just couldn't even turn them. Forget that. So with the little thread in them though, that worked out really nicely. So then before I sew all the way around this, I'm gonna be tucking these in. They'll get sewn inside that way. And then when we turn it, they'll flip right side out. So that's how I want them. So now I'm just gonna tuck them in like that. This is a good time for clips and have it reasonably even. So now for this one, I'm gonna leave a gap along the straight side of his leg. I'm starting at one set of double pins and because this is such an open knit, I'm gonna try a zigzag that is 2.5 millimeters by 2.5 millimeters. There's my first little arm. I wanna make sure I catch those edges. So again, just check your whole perimeter. Make sure that you haven't missed an edge like right there and then even though this is a bigger seam allowance here I don't think I'm going to clip it because it's turning nicely and I'm just you know this knit is just so loose that I don't want to clip anything in fact I think I'm going to come in a little closer here then it's time to turn it right side out and those little arms are actually going to be useful now to turn him or her maybe it's a girl Martian or they perhaps monsters are non-binary. So now a little face. I think we're gonna just do button eyes, a big yellow eye and a small yellow eye, and then red in the middle, and then a shank nose. There's the nose, there's one eye, and here's the other eye. And then for the mouth, I kind of like doing it asymmetrical. You don't have to try so hard to get it symmetrical. Okay, so I've got my quadruple thread here, but this knit is so open, I'm thinking that knot is just gonna pull through anyway. So I'll make my little stitch. I'll just separate the threads and put my needle through so that the knot doesn't just pull right through. There we go. So up one button and up the second button and then down both buttons through the same spot. And if I kind of dig into the stuffing a little bit, it's gonna feel a little bit more secure. There, cute. So because I've got a quadruple thread, I only have to go through about three times and through at the same time, trying to grab a little bit of stuffing. Good, so that's three times. Now I'm gonna tie my knot, but I'm not going to cut my thread. So to tie my knot, I'm just catching all of that, make my little loop form, put my needle back through the loop second time, and then put my needle in, 
and come out at the second eye. Good. Up one, up the other. I think that the asymmetrical eyes are pretty funny. So three times there, and then I'll come out at the nose. So nothing's buttoning onto these buttons, so I don't have to worry about like wrapping my thread and making it sit high above the knit. I just want it snug onto the knit. A couple of times through the loop, in, and then come out at the nose. And then a little shank button here. I think a dark color thread is kind of cute on eyes because it makes it like a pupil. But then I've also got this dark line around the nose, so that kind of ties in. And now I might as well use the same thread to embroider his mouth a little bit. So same deal. In, come out at the beginning of the mouth. And then I'm just going to do a chain stitch. So to do that, make my thread go around in that circle. Take a stitch and make sure I'm coming out inside that circle. In the same place the thread's coming out. And catch that loop every time. I'm trying to make my stitches all about the same size. And I'm trying not to pull my thread tight. You want to have it look like a little chain. A last little stitch. Catch that loop. Do that a second time. Sometimes I even go twice, like I pull that loop tight and then put the needle through the loop again. All right, and then I don't want to cut my thread there, right? Put the needle in, come out anywhere, and then cut. So the tail is hidden inside. And then that, my friend, is done. Oh, I love him so much. He's hilarious. All right, moving right along. So now a more classic bear shape, but still two-dimensional. This one comes from Scratch and Stitch. It already fits on one computer paper, so that's a breeze. It's a super cute one. Also still really, really good for beginners. So let's try this one. I think I'm going to try to get him out of this red and black sweater that I made that nice beret from a couple videos ago. If I fold him in half, this plaid, I think it looks best if either I have one plaid running down the middle. So we'll just try to arrange like that. And you want your cutting to be as smooth as you can on little projects like this. If I've got little corners sticking out, I'll just trim those off. So with this one, I want to show you that you can also, on some of these two-dimensional bears, you can sew wrong sides together. You can sew it from the outside. So that makes it a little bit more beginner-friendly too. So the seam will be on the outside. Anytime you're appliquing on or putting safety eyes, you need to do that to one layer first. If you're just going to be embroidering on or sewing on a button, you can do that after. So I've traced that heart off and cut it separately. So I think that's quite cute. The heart and the nose all cut out of a different fabric. Oh yeah, perfect. Look at that. Oh, that looks so cute. Before I take him to the machine, I am really liking this sew line glue pen. I'll leave a link in the description for this because this has been super handy for all these little small pieces. All right, let's go to the machine with him. So I'm going to zigzag this little heart on. I've got matching thread and I'm gonna use the zigzag stitch. I kind of want it, I want the zigzag wide, but short. So I've got about three millimeters wide and two millimeters long. And I'm trying to aim my needle so it's going on the heart and off the heart and on and back off. And I could even take my zigzag a little bit wider. I'll try four wide and two long and I'll just go around a second time. Okay, so that got a bit stretched out. I'm going to give that a little press. I think that's pretty good, though. Okay, so that came out nice with the iron, but I accidentally erased his face. <laughs> Whoopsie. So let's go figure out his face again. Okay, do red safety eyes, because when else am I going to use the red ones? And then there are two different noses that could work. So one is more 3D, like, a, you know, it's got the little nostrils, and one is just the triangle shape. I think the triangle shape. Just to be sure, like to reinforce the knit, I'm going to put a piece of interfacing behind that. And now I can't iron on this interfacing because I'll erase the face again. I don't want to do that. But that is the idea that I'm just sort of reinforcing his eyes and nose. Okay, poking a hole in the eye and putting the eye through. And then I was wondering about these points, if they are a little bit of a, a hazard, especially this bear is going to be quite flat. And with our polar bear, no, I can't feel the points through. I really cannot. I think even if a little kid stepped on this, I don't think it poses any hazard. I tried using a backstitch and black thread to sew a mouth, but it really did not show up at all. 
So I'm going over it with a chain stitch in the gray thread. That's way better. And for this little guy, I am going to sew him uh, right side out so that the seam on the outside edge is visible and hopefully becomes like part of his charm. I'm going to leave a gap on his inner leg. The pattern says to leave it on the outer leg, but I like this spot better to give me a little bit more room. So I want to be nice and even from the edge. So I'm leaving that one toe hang over the edge again and trying to be nice and smooth because my stitching is going to show this time. And I don't want to have too many holes to have to patch because all those little back tacks are going to show. So I really want to try to catch both edges evenly this time. And I'm running out of bobbin thread. I have to go four more inches. Ah. And I think I just made it up. <laughs> so then, yes, I'll just trim off any parts that don't look smooth. Something like felt also works really nicely for this to sew it from the outside like this because, you know, felt doesn't fray at all. A sweatshirt fleece also works really well because it doesn't fray. So now I'll stuff him and then it, I won't be using the ladder stitch to close him up. I'll actually come back to the sewing machine and just sew that little bit on the sewing machine. So let's talk about stuffing for a second. I actually never buy stuffing. I take old bed pillows and I wash them and when they come out lumpy and tired and they are done, then I cut them up for stuffing. And even in my classroom, I ask the staff for their old bed pillows and the same thing, I wash them and then I rip them up. Even all the stuff that comes off the serger, I even take some of that bigger pieces like these six legs that I didn't end up using. I'm just going to slice and dice, cut those all up small, and that can augment my stuffing, especially on this bear where he's a bit more firm and solid. I don't really need him to be super soft and squishy. I actually pay to have my scraps recycled. I have to pay money for that. So I would rather recycle it myself. Just make sure your left hand is safe. So all of that makes beautiful stuffing. It might be a little bit messier, but it keeps fabrics out of the landfill and it really does work nicely. I might just have to give him a little go over with a lint brush after. I know it looks like I've wrecked him, doesn't it? Looks like I totally destroyed my poor love bear. <laughs> He's going to be alright though, don't worry. So I wonder if my Gogo Lint Shaver will do the trick here. Talk about putting it to the test. Okay, so a couple things he needs. A little bit more cosmetic work. <laughs> And then I'm just going to take it back to the machine, sew that little bit up. Alrighty, so I'm just going to sew those couple inches closed. There we go. That is definitely quicker than the ladder stitch. I'm not going to say better, but it is quicker. Okay, so this little guy is delinted. He's looking lovely. And now he just needs a little ribbon around his neck. I like putting a ribbon around bear's necks because it just gives a bit more definition. I'm going to go shiny side out and then wrap it with the dull side out so that you can pull shiny side out again. Okay, so there's that little guy. That's the love bear. He's so sweet. Let's move on now to the, another classic bear, but one that is three-dimensional. Okay, and here is our fifth and final bear. This one I think is my all-time favorite. He's one I've used for years with my students, and I made this one out of an old brown sweater, which was just perfect for a bear. He's lovely. And I tried to find the source for the pattern, but all I could find online was a PDF on Flickr. So I still put that link in the description. You can still print that off. It, when you go to print it, it gives you a choice of like small, medium, large, I don't know. And so I chose the medium one. I printed the medium choice. It came out kind of small like this, and that's a little too small. So I pieced it together and put it back through the photocopier and set it to 120% so that the front and the back each fit on one computer paper. This one you need to have a little bit more control in the sewing machine. You need to make nice pivots, nice curves, but if you can do that, you can make a beautiful bear here. So let's give this one a try. When you print off that PDF, it's got, I think it's Portuguese or something written on it. So don't be confused though, it's just one at the back and you cut that on the fold 
and two pieces of the front. Now I went thrifting and I couldn't really find anything that looked great for this classic brown bear until I got to the children's department and then I found this little sweater. I thought that would make the perfect bear. Now it is a very open knit so there's no way I would put safety nose and eyes on that because they, they would just pull through. So I will be embroidering a face onto him. So I'm getting the back on the fold of the sleeve. Again, you want to be like accurate as you cut around these curves. If you don't cut precisely, then it's really hard to sew precisely. And then it's really hard to get a good finished product. And if there is a direction, like this does seem to brush down. So I think it's good to pay attention to what they call the nap of the fabric, like the direction it's going in. And I don't want to have the nap going up on the back and down on the front, like I want it the same. Here we go. So even paying attention to little things, like there's a little flat part right there. And then this dot and this dot are important. Normally, uh, if I was cutting this out of sweatshirt fleece, I would make a little snip right there and a little snip right there. That's our first sewing step from that dot to this dot. This fabric is the same on both sides, so I'm not even going to rearrange him. I'm going to mark with a pin and I'm going to start sewing right here at this dot. For this, I think I'll be able to just mark it with a pin. I'm going to start sewing at the pink pin and come around to the green. So I zigzagged from the pin in his forehead all the way around to the pin under his belly, and I had to go a couple of times over because this knit is so loose that there were a couple of holes so check the seams nicely and then the back opens up and goes right side together with the front and i'm going to be embroidering his whole face on so i'm going to do that after and i'll be showing you how you can do sculpting stitching it's called to give him even more of a 3d appearance and the stitch i'll use is a zigzag that is two by two so now i'll be sewing around the whole outside edge and i'll leave my gap in that straight section of his leg and again i'm leaving the toe of my presser foot hang over the edge it's just a bit of craziness with this super fuzzy fabric it feels like i'm sewing a pile of mashed potatoes and gravy it's not really holding together we'll have to see how it turns out Check all the way around and make sure there are no holes or that I'm not just so close to the raw edge that it's going to pull out. Oh, there's a hole, definitely. That's a big hole. So turn them all right side out through the gap. He looks a little mangled, but I still think he's going to be cute. So I'm going to stuff him and do the ladder stitch, but you've seen that already enough in this video. I'll do it off camera and then I'll come back and just show you the sculpting stitch and the face. So this little fella just came out so cute. I had to do a little bit of like uh, pushing and pulling and manipulating to get him to be symmetrical. So now he needs a face and then some sculpting stitching. So I'm gonna cut one and a half arms lengths of embroidery floss. And remember this comes in six strands. So you just separate that. Oh, he's doing a nice job holding that for me. <laughs> you separate it into three and three. And with the part you just pulled off, you can kind of store it by wrapping it around your skein. And then the three can go into an embroidery needle. See with the big eye, that's what you want. And pull that through and then just tie a knot in the three. You're not bringing your ends down together and tying in six, you're just tying the three. Alrighty, so this tail of thread and the embroidery thread just stays about halfway down. Like you don't want that tail to get caught into your work. Okay, I just wanna make sure I'm symmetrical and looking good. And then of course the nose will go right at the end so I don't really have to mark that. I want to find a place to catch that knot. So I'm going to go down right in the middle of where the eye is going to be. So hopefully the knot doesn't just right, pull right through. It's in the center of where I'm going to be doing a satin stitched eye. So I'm going to do a little back stitch around the circle that I want. So I took a little stitch. Now I go back. My needle is going to come out one stitch ahead of where my thread is coming out. And then I go back. The needle comes out one stitch ahead. So that's the back stitch. It's pretty straightforward. Well, it's straight backward, really, but <laughs> okay, back and then one stitch forward. So that is just marking off the circle that I'm going to be doing a satin stitch to fill in. 
And you could use that same chain stitch that we've already done. You could use that to fill in this circle too. No problem there. So now satin stitch means all my stitches are going to be straight up and down. And so they'll be smaller at the sides of the circle and then get bigger as I go toward the middle of the circle. So I'm basically just trying to fill in that circle and I probably will go over it twice, which probably not technically the way you're supposed to do it. But you see that there's little spaces in between the stitches. I'm trying to get them right on top of each other, but I find that it's, I usually go over it twice to fill in those gaps. And now I'll go back with my satin stitches going that way. So there's the tail of the thread getting shorter. Don't let it get caught in. Just shorten it up on your needle. Okay, when one eye is looking more or less satisfactory, I'm gonna put my needle in and come out at the other eye so that I can kind of pull the thread and it sort of squishes in and does a little bit of sculpting around his muzzle. And then a little bit of a back stitch again around, like just to delineate that eye. I might need a new thread in a minute. Okay, so I've got my circle more or less drawn with that back stitch, and now I can start filling in with the satin stitch. I've got to tie off my thread. It's getting too short, so tie off while I still have enough to make a knot. It doesn't matter where I pull my thread out. And people that do fine embroidery don't tie knots like this. They uh, just make some small stitches to secure, but I never feel quite secure without a knot. But I do like to hide that knot. I don't want it visible on the eye at all. So luckily this fuzz hides everything. So definitely those safety eyes are the fastest. Buttons are pretty quick, but the embroidered eyes or like a little applique piece of fabric like on the first bear, that's the safest, right? If you are giving this to a baby or a toddler who you're afraid is going to be putting it in their mouth and chewing or whatever, then yeah, you don't want to put small plastic pieces on it. And I do like the look of the embroidered. It just makes it sort of more old fashioned, more handmade. Then I'm gonna put my needle in and come out at the nose. The nose is gonna be an upside down triangle. So I think again, I'll just like make some outlining stitches. I wish I had a little bit more stuffing in the nose. It is a little funny. That's kind of like a giant back stitch as I'm outlining the nose. And so now I'm gonna fill that in. And the satin stitch does take up a lot of thread because you've got these long stitches that go, you know, the back looks basically the same thing, right? Your long stitches go on both sides. So it takes a lot of thread up. Okay, so I'll just tie up a little knot and get another thread going. If my thread's too short, I can go backwards through my loop just to make sure it's secure. I just gotta cover up this one little patch that just refuses to get covered. That is gonna have to be good enough. <laughs> and then I just wanna do a few stitches under the nose to make like a little mouth. And I'm just gonna do about three stitches on top of each other, one, like going straight down. There's one, two, and three. Okay, and then I'm gonna angle down for three. One, and two, that makes the third. And then go on an angle this way, which hopefully is symmetrical. Got that little knot, needle in, out anywhere. So that's a sweet face. Now the sculpting stitching. So I'm gonna use a matching thread this time. So that is gonna be hard for you to see, but you'll have to trust me. Two arms lengths of thread through the needle, double it up, tie your knot. And so now there's six points that I want to sculpt right there in his ear at the joint of his arm and the joint of his leg. If you have to hide your knot, do so. I don't have to hide anything on this fuzz. It just hides everything. So I'm taking a small, small stitch here and going back on an angle. My stitchers are going to kind of go like that through his ear on a zigzag. Here, a little stitch and come out just to like on an angle over there. It's only a small stitch on the surface, but you don't have to have a million of them. You can kind of space them out. That's what the zigzag sort of does. So what that does is it just gives shape to his face because it doesn't look nice if it's too fat at the front of his ear. It looks nicer if it's dented in there. And if your fabric shows more than mine, well, every fabric is gonna show more than this. 
then it's still probably fine because you'll have just small stitches showing and you kind of travel on that angle in between the layers there like that does look kind of better i hope you can see the difference it's nice and flat in here looks more like an ear so i'm going to tie off here so that that thread stays sort of snugly pulled in there and then i could either cut my thread or i can travel through him and doing some sculpting on the way so if i go from one eye to the other i can give like a little bit more shape to his face i'm going to tie a little knot here too so that that thread doesn't just slip back out so that i'm giving a little bit more shape to his face and then i'm going to go around that ear shape in the same way and this is the one that I made years ago. And you can see, maybe better on here, it's not quite so fuzzy. You can see the sculpting stitches go through his ear there and at his arms and legs, right? So it just gives him a bit of definition. And then from one leg, I can just travel to the other leg, tying a knot off in between, but not cutting my thread. I just want to secure the thread so it stays taut. And no bear is complete without his little bow. That is very sweet. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you had fun with that. I know I did. That was a blast making all of those cute gifts. That was really fun and it was great to have you along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, I'm Catherine Sows. You take care.